Hello, you legendary people. Welcome to or welcome back to Lauren's Legends. Today's video is one that is very important to me because it has stuck with me for years and one of the many reasons why I started this channel. This case has kept me up many nights wondering. Lisanne Froon and Chris Krimmers, two Dutch girls who go on a trip to Panama and embark on a hike through the jungle and then are never seen again. The Panamanian government has deemed their disappearance an accident. But when their camera is found, it leads me to believe that there is so much more to the story of what happened to these two young girls. Warning. After this video, you may spend hours on Google trying to read and find out everything you possibly can about this one like I did. So sit back, relax, and get ready because we are diving right in. Chris Krimmers, 21, and Lizanne Froon, 22, grew up in the Netherlands. These girls were beautiful, driven, and highly intelligent, with both having the spirit of adventure. They got a job at a local Dutch cafe and worked very hard to save for the trip to Panama. They were celebrating Lizanne graduating with her degree in applied sciences. They picked Panama because they wanted to learn Spanish better and the jungle was vastly different than where they lived. They extensively planned their six week trip as a working vacation. Arriving on March 15th, they would spend the first two weeks exploring all over the area, staying in hostels and relaxing on beaches with friends they were making throughout their journey. On March 29th, they arrived in a small mountainous town called Boquet. This town was where they were scheduled to stay at a host home for the next month. They were set to study at a local school, learning Spanish and volunteering with the children. They were under the impression that in a few days they would start working, but when they went to the school, they were informed that they were a week early to what the school had scheduled. This frustrated the eager Dutch girls, but they decided to make the best of their situation and their week and scheduled a hike for April 2nd with a local guide. On the morning of April 1st, they went to a local restaurant and had breakfast with two Dutchmen the girls had befriended along their travels. Shortly after, they decided to set out on their own hike without a guide, against all the advice from the locals. No one truly knows what prompted the girls to decide to take this hike a day before they had already paid a guide to take them. The girls were seen at the trailhead of the El Pianista Trail that morning around 11 a.m. This trail was said to take about two to three hours to get to the top and the same time to get back. When the girls set out, they were only wearing tank tops and shorts. They had one book bag, with only two water bottles of water and a few other miscellaneous items. They did not bring jackets and it is clear that they were not intending or planning on staying there for the night. This trail has many dangers and it is said that if you were to wander off it, it would be very difficult to find your way back. There were parts of the trail that would open up to fenced off pasture lands with local tiny houses that were very remote. And at the end of the normal trail, there is another trail that only the indigenous people use to transport their cattle down. There are signs in different languages to not take this path because it is very dangerous. Later that night, the host family began to get concerned when the girls did not come back to the house. They reached out to Lizanne's mother, but she had not heard from them. Her mother sent her a text, which went unanswered. This was odd. The girls had stayed in constant communication with their families the entire time. 
The host family decided to wait out the night, thinking maybe the girls had met up with friends they had made and they would come back in the morning. But the morning came and the girls still did not return. The guy that the girls had hired grew very concerned when the girls did not show up and he decided to go by the host home and looked in the room and could see that all of their belongings except the few things they had taken with them were still there. This was alarming because it proves they had intended on coming back and he alerted the police. On April 3rd, the searches began. These searches consisted of planes flying over and teams of locals searching up the trails. On April 4th, the girls' parents arrived and they combed through the jungle with the local authorities, the special units, and even sniffer dogs. 10 days would quickly pass without a single piece of evidence being found. No dogs picked up any scents, no clothes or anything were located. Unfortunately, heavy storms moved into the area, meaning with hearts broken, they abandoned the search. The local authorities decided to rule the disappearance as an accident. They believed the girls had taken the trail by the Serpent River and that they had tried to cross a dangerous rope bridge referred to as a monkey bridge. They believed that both girls or one of them had fallen into the river and hit their heads and drowned in the rapids. That would be the story until 10 weeks later when an indigenous woman would come into the police station with a blue backpack that would poke a billion holes into this theory. The woman said that on the morning of June 14th, 2014, she had been tending to her rice paddies near the Alto Ramira village near the Pianista Trail and had been down by the riverbank when she saw the blue backpack. She said she was positive that the backpack had not been there the day before. Even though this village was considered close to the trail, it still was many miles away from where the girls had been. The backpack was in excellent condition after spending 10 weeks in the downpours and elements of the jungle and the inside of it was completely dry. But what was inside it is where the mystery really heats up. It contained both girls' cell phones, sunglasses, two bras, a camera, and $83 in cash, and Lizanne's passport. When the authorities turned the phones back on and pulled the records, they were able to show that the first emergency call had been made only a few actors after they began their hike. This had been made to the Holland emergency phone number and the next morning there were numerous calls made from both phones to both the Holland emergency number and to 911 which is also the Panama emergency phone number. Only one call went through for one second before disconnecting because there was absolutely no service in the area. It was later proven that they had made 77 emergency phone calls. By the third day, both girls intermittently turned their phones off and on to save battery. Then Lizanne's phone died on April 5th, but Chris's phone was still working. And between April 5th and April 11th, several incorrect pin attempts were recorded. Chris's phone turned off around noon on April 11th for the final time. So after the phone records, the police then looked through the camera and things got really creepy. The picture started out like you would expect. Two young girls enjoying themselves, taking selfies with a beautiful landscape, but the last pictures of the hike grew ominous and as they began placing them further away from Boquet. The last picture taken on this day was that of picture 0508 
and it is of Chris. This picture has caused a lot of speculation because she looks very unhappy. Then investigators found the next camera photo was listed at 0510. If they were lost out on a trail or injured, why would they worry about deleting a photo? Experts have worked on the camera and even when a picture is deleted on the camera, it is still on the memory card. Making them believe it was deleted on the camera and the memory card after the camera was found because supposedly you're only supposed to be able to do this from a computer. Now, the strange thing about photo 0510 was that it was the beginning of a sequence of 90 photos that were taken on the 8th of April between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. on the camera. These photos were taken every two minutes through that time period. They were all dark and of the landscape, except for one photo. That photo was the back of Chris's head. There have been loads of speculation about this picture, and many people think that it shows an injury on her temple. I have actually played with the lighting on it, and I personally think that it could have a face in it or two faces. Paradoxia is a real thing. I don't know. To me, it's very creepy and it just makes me just want to look so much further into this whole story. Carrying on, the phone records and the photos prompted a new search in this area and the indigenous people soon recovered Chris's shorts and a piece of her pelvic bone. Then, not far away, Lizanne's boot was found with her foot still inside. Their small amount of remains were found many miles from where they should have been. Once these remains were found and inspected, the case got even stranger. Chris's pelvic bone was bleached white. Many experts have weighed in on this and almost all agree that the bone had not been in the right elements for this to have happened. Even more strange, traces of phosphorus, the same substance that is commonly used in fertilizers and lye, which is commonly used to help decompose a body, were found. Many medical examiner reports show that 10% of Lisanne and only 5% of Chris have ever been found, leading the medical examiners to not believe that animals scavenge their bodies. No bite marks or scratch marks or claw marks were ever found anywhere on the small amount of remains. What's more is an American hiker went missing and was found passed away two years later in the same area and the same elements and they found 90% of his skeleton intact and he had no bone bleaching. With all this information and strange circumstances, the Panamanian government is still listing this as an accident and that could be for many reasons. Tourism is what keeps their economy going and the situation also makes you think about how dangerous these hikes are and that only boosts the business for the local guides. With so many theories all being very great, it is hard to break down the most believable. I am strongly considering doing a series where I break down each aspect and theory and inconsistency in this. Please let me know if that is something that you would be interested in watching. All right, let's talk about the accident theory. That would mean that these girls had gone out hiking all day and got to the end of the trail and decided to keep going down a dangerous area that was not marked past the beginning of it. Being a hiker myself, I have actually been lost in the forest at night with three other girls. 
we decided to be careful and move slow while using the flashlights to go down the mountain, knowing that was the best case scenario to get back to our cars. And after quite some time and a little bit of scariness, it finally worked. Okay, so if there was a really harsh edit right there, I do apologize, my camera died. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna go right back to where we were. So we get down to our cars and it worked. But these girls would have had to keep going and most likely uphill with no point or reason. They had already been to the pretty views. Then one would have had to get hurt, prompting the first emergency call. Then they would have had to needed to settle in for the night. They were very underdressed and it would have been freezing and they had no food. If we go by the phone records, it would seem that Chris passed away and then Lizanne was trying to get into her phone and that would account for all the wrong entries. But that would also mean that Lizanne somehow survived in the jungle for 11 days and then took those strange nighttime photos. Was she trying to map out where they were? Was she trying to flash the light to alert the searchers? Was she trying to leave a breadcrumb in case her camera was found for her family on where she had been? Or was she trying to use the flash to scare off an animal? One of the reasons this is so hard for me to believe is why didn't she use the camera to record a goodbye message to her family? That would be one of my first thoughts is to record something telling my mom and dad I love them and this is what's happened to me. I am personally convinced it was foul play and that these beautiful girls were somehow captured for nefarious reasons. There is quite a bit of human trafficking in this area as well as cartel activity. The cartels are also known as being famous of disposing their victims by using lie. Another huge theory out there is that the tour guide is involved in some way. He is one of the last people that the girl spoke to and depending on who you talk to, he is either the best guide or a woman should trust being alone with and he was able to look into their room before the authorities did. The remains were also found a few miles from his home. The authorities have cleared him, but the questions in people's minds still remain. I do believe there are too many strange things here for there not to have been a third party involved. I wonder if picture 0509 had someone in it that shouldn't have been. I wonder if the rumors of the local government being corrupt played a part and I wonder if the girls were taken and someone else took those photos to confuse others even more. I also think they might have disposed of the remains because the case was heating up and with people coming in from all over the world. Whatever the case is, my heart truly goes out to those two girls that would have done amazing things in this world and to their families. As much as this case has haunted me, I cannot begin to imagine what this does to them and their loved ones. This case haunts me too because I can see a lot of myself in these adventurous girls. I have been on amazing wild hikes with my girlfriends going through the Grand Canyon or in the middle of the gorge in North Carolina and getting caught in a cave during a thunderstorm. And I just can't imagine what these girls went through. I also do believe that it's very important to take a first aid kit with you when you're going off the grid to a place that doesn't have service. I do know that there's little beacons that you can get as emergency beacons. You can push a button on that will alert the emergency services. I need to get one for myself as much as I do go into the wilderness. But what do you think about the story? Would you like me to do a series on it and break down all the inconsistencies throughout the entire story. Um, please let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you next time.